All right, we're back on. Of course, no, I can't forget my Herbalife shake. Needs to stay hydrated. All right, that's pissing me off. So we're banned yesterday from Facebook for whatever. I don't know if it was for playing music. Who knows why? They ban us all the time. And they even just cut us off now. But now it looks like we're all set up. I think we're going to be all good to go. So what we're going to go over today is basically who wants to know what all my secrets are for self-development, discipline, and getting in the best shape of your life. I made it a goal this, on this trip that I just had into Las Vegas to get into the best shape of my life. And I think I pretty much accomplished that. Definitely got the leanest. We're going to go over all that stuff. We're also going to be covering the, new, the details of all the new challenges we have. Steve Owen is joining us. Steve Owen, stay tuned. Keep listening. I'm going to mention you in a little bit. Anyway, we're going to go over the 28-day challenges we have coming up at the, in about a week and a half. We're going to go over a brand new referral contest that starts today, but technically it started a couple of days ago. We're going to go over the details on that, a referral challenge for the current members or new members, whatever. We're going to announce the client of the month coming up. We're going to go over the details of the six-week weight loss challenge party coming up, answering all of your questions. We have a case study, going to all the usual stuff. If you have any questions, you could ask them right away as we're going here live. You can post them in there, post them after, whatever works. However we can help you, just ask questions, whatever. So we're going to start off with self-development, basically, which was the entire purpose of me going out to Las Vegas. What a, not, there's not much of a better place you can go that has more distractions to make you focus on your discipline and self-development. So like I mentioned the other day, that, that's what my trip to Las Vegas is all about. I actually did the Facebook Live and that it kept getting get cut out on the street. We ended up in the casino and we got kicked out of the casino. We actually got kicked out of the casino. There was a, a portly, overweight gentleman that asked, told me I was being too loud in the fucking casino. It's a casino in Las Vegas. I don't know there's such thing as being too fucking loud. But this guy tells me I'm being too loud and there's some women in some room working in a casino. No. Did you guys purposely come to see this live? You know you guys could have watched this online, right? You wanted a lot. You wanted to see it live firsthand. But people don't see us, so they can only hear us. So you guys are bad enough that you you wait to see this live on, on the on the internet. But at least you watch it from there. They came here to see this live in person. But anyway, let's keep rolling. So yeah, they told me to get out because I was being too loud in the casino. I didn't know you could be too loud. I was just by myself doing a video, just like I'm doing right now. They told me I'm being too loud in the casino. So let's keep rolling. So we finished it off, whatever, and we got the Facebook Live eventually done there. But it's all about self-development. It's all about stepping out of your comfort zone, about improving myself, improving yourself, and to become a better version of yourself every day than you were the day before. That's what it's all about. So throughout my life, obviously, I can always work on my self-development because I am, if any of you know me, I am one fucked up individual. So, but with one word, I've been able to survive in this world and still be standing here to able to talk to you and hopefully help a lot of you out. And not only survive in this world, I've been able to fucking thrive in this world. And there's one word that has allowed that to happen. We're going to go over that in a little bit. So I'm thinking of one word. Who, who thinks they can tell me what that one word is? Start thinking of what that one word might be. One word is that, that is the key to this success in anything you do. The secret to self-development. The secret to getting what the fuck you want out of life. And it's also the secret to getting in the best shape of your life. Who can tell me the one word I'm thinking of? And it's not no excuses, you freaking geniuses, because no excuses is two words. So that's not even the word I'm thinking of. And it's not even fucking discipline, you know, which are both very important, obviously. But no excuses is two words. I just said it's not discipline, but good choice. Not discipline. Nope. Even more than discipline. Because you could have, it, it kind of go, all, obviously all goes hand in hand, not motivation. Who can tell me the word? Who? You have five seconds, someone comes up the word, you got a free t-shirt. And I think Raj, I stole your t-shirt from when I did that live in Vegas. And I said the, something about, you told me something first. And uh, so I owe you a t-shirt. Raj, I owe you a camo t-shirt. Something on Memorial Day. You told me something about Memorial Day. You were the first one to post on that. You got five seconds or something to get a, a camo t-shirt to tell me the one word that I'm thinking of. One word that will get you to where you want to be. It'll make you fucking unstoppable. One word that will make no obstacle or roadblock too big in your life and make no enemy or any force against you too strong. We still don't have the word. Determination is not the word. We're close. Obviously, they're all they're in the same boat. They're kind of in the same. But this is the one word that's going to make all those happen. One word. Without this, none of those can happen. Who can tell me the word I'm thinking about? You got five seconds. You know I don't know how to count. No excuses. Two words. We went over that. Dedication. No. Consistency. No. We're getting close. These are all in the same. They're all in the same boat. These are all good words. Obviously, courage. No. Why? No. It's even more than why. Why is a good one. Focus is another good one. Consistency is a good one. Obviously, these are all my peak freaks that know 
the mindset that we have, but we're still waiting for that one fucking word. Drive. Nope. It's, oh, some of these could even maybe even be synonyms. That's a big word for you guys out there. That means a word that is, you know, that's very similar to it. But passion, no. All these words obviously are important that you're saying, but with, to, to me, at least, the way I see it, with this one word that I'm talking about, none of those can be possible without this word, this one word that I'm thinking of. I'm going to give you two more seconds while I get another sip of my Herbalife drink if you guys come up with it. See if anyone can come up with it. Who wants that free camo t-shirt? We've got digital camo, we got the, the woodland camo, or the pink camo. Goals, no. Jesus, I want to give away a fucking shirt. Would someone give me the word? You? Us? No. No, no, no. Discipline's not the word. Discipline would probably be my second word. Fuck, that is the best answer so far, but no, that's not it. That is, I'm, I'm so, like, I need to come up with a new word. I use fuck so often that it's not even, like, nothing special. I need to come up with something better than fuck, because fuck is just, like, cat or dog or, or chair to me. So, you got, like, two seconds, because we got to get rolling, because we started this late, because there's always some shit going on. I'm going to show you why we started this late, because I was over here doing some work for you guys. I'm going to show you in a second. That's why we actually started this late. If, if we're ever not doing this, and I tell you I'm going to do something at a certain time, and we don't do it at that time, there is always a reason. Determination, no, purpose, no. These are all awesome words, by the way. And all these words, someone should be putting together as a list because this is just a fucking awesome list of words. Passion, this is like all these together right underneath the umbrella of this one word that I'm talking about. This one word is going to make this stuff happen. Without this one word, none of these things can happen. Confidence, these are all awesome words. Someone should make this as a checklist. We should just print these and put them all over the freaking gym. All these words you're coming up with because they're all great words, but they are still not my word and we got to move on in like two seconds. All right, I'm going to give a hint. Should I give a hint? A hint, it starts with the letter... Who's this? Drive, confidence, no. Starts with the letter P. Who can give it to me? Quick, we got to move, we got to move. Vision does not start with P. Goal does not start with P. It starts with the letter P. You got like five seconds. Did you say porn? Oh, plan. I thought you said porn. Porn would be a good one. That's a pretty important, I think. You could probably, you know, porn maybe makes all this other stuff happen. A plan, no. Purpose, nope. Purpose, nope. Other more good stuff. You guys are thinkers. I love it. All these peak freaks are freaking thinkers. Progress, nope. These are all awesome words. Look at this. You guys' brains. Persistent is our word. Rose is the winner. She gets a camo t-shirt, even though I had to give you a freaking hint. And perseverance was right behind it. If someone said perseverance, I was going to give it to you. Persistence is the real word. Perseverance is the same exact word and also with a P. But Rosa was the first one to come up with persistence or persistent. Peak, yes, peak is also a great word. Physique, of course, all good ones, but that's not what it's all about. It is about persistence. That is the word. Persistence, or my way of describing persistence. Basically, my synonym for persistence is... I bet no one can tell me it. Or maybe someone can tell me it. But I wouldn't have time to keep waiting. So my, my, my persistence, my way of describing, describing persistence is don't be a little bitch. That's the way I describe it. So we're going to go with a quote here. You guys know I love quotes. I always love to give you quotes. Calvin Coolidge is this quote. Nothing in the world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and de determination alone are omnipotent. The slogan, press on, has solved and always will solve problems in the human race. Persistence. That's all, that is what will make all this other, all those other words you guys listed, persistence is going to make all those possible. Without being persistent, you'll fail at all those other ones. If you just are going to give up and not push through and fight through when you have obstacles in your way or you have some motherfuckers that are trying to stop you from getting what you want and what you need and what you deserve. So persistence, perseverance, whatever the hell you want to call it, or just flat out, like I said, don't be a little bitch, not take a no for an answer or, you know, just not fucking stopping to get what you want, what you need and what you fucking deserve. You know, you getting, take, going and getting it and taking whatever the fuck is yours. That's what persistence is about. That's what's going to make all this other stuff happen. Oh, someone trying to steal your t-shirt, Rosa? Rosa was the first one that popped up on my feed. Rosa's got the t-shirt. Perseverance is a good one too, but I had to give you guys that P. I'm a little disappointed. You guys came up with an awesome list, but you, you disappointed me with, I may make you have to give you a hint. So anyway, when it comes to life, and that's why you need to be persistent, you will fail. You will be a failure in life. A lot. You will fail all the time. Every day there's probably going to be some failures, which is exactly why you need to fucking celebrate every tiny little victory you have so it can overpower and overcome those failures. Because you're going to have more failures in life than you have victories and successes probably. Or at, le at least up to a certain point. So I've been, a, I've been a fucking failure a good portion of my life, at least my early life. 
Like, that's just the way it is, and you just need to have persistence and drive through and grind it out and work through the bullshit and push through the bullshit and get rid of the negative bullshit that's in your life like we always talk about and, and keep rolling. Push through it, blast through it. Look at, look at baseball, baseball players. If you have a 300 batting average in baseball, you're considered great. Do you know what a 300 batting average means? That means you gotta hit three times out of every 10 times you came to bat. Three out of every 10. That means failing seven out of 10 times and you're considered a great fucking hitter with a 300 batting average. You failed seven times out of 10. So imagine those baseball players, they got an out, one single out, right? We know that seven outs out of 10 and you're still considered great. Imagine every single time you had one out in there. One of those baseball players, whoever, uh, Derek Jeter, sits there and gets out one time. And he just starts getting down on himself. Oh, man, I got out. This sucks. I'm, I'm no good. I'm just going to have to give it up. I'm not going to try as hard the next time or whatever. Then he would be, you know, we would say stop being a little bitch. He'd be in that category of being a little bitch. But he obviously wasn't. You're going to grind it out. You're going to come up the next time. You're going to try and figure it out. You're going to fucking adapt and overcome. You're going to figure this shit out. And you're going to take yours. Take what's yours. He's going to get those three hits out of every ten. And that's going to be considered great. If he bitched and moaned every one of those failures, those seven out of ten failures, he'd be nowhere. He'd have gotten nowhere. He never made it out of fucking Little League. So, shit. In my, in my early years, in life in general, I used to fail freaking 11 out of 10 times. I'm talking about, I was a walking fucking failing nightmare is what I was. But no matter what, even when I was a troublemaker causing havoc in the streets as a, as a, as a teenager, I still always had persistence. I still always knew I was going to get through it. I was going to grind it out. I was going to figure it out. I was going to find my path. And when I found my fucking path, I was going to have some laser beam focus and I was going to fucking dominate my path and I was going to take what's mine. You might, you're going to, you might encounter like many defeats. This, this is a, another quote. And I'm going to say this quote, and I want to see who, while I'm saying it, who can tell me who it is. And we got another t-shirt, if someone can tell me whose quote this is. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter, encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. Who can tell me who that quote is from? Someone can tell me who that quote is from? You get a freaking t-shirt, a camo t-shirt. We just like giving that shit away. I'll say it one more time. You may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, and how you can still come out of it. And I'm not giving you more than like two seconds. If you don't know it, you don't know that shit. So I'm not going to wait for you to Google that bullshit and then come up and act like you knew who it was. You got three seconds. Someone type in whose who's quote that was. Two seconds. One second. Patton? No, but good guess. Patton has tons of I've always quote Patton stuff, right? Maya Angelou was the, was the who, whose quote that was. One second. Hey, what's up? You good? You're all set? You good? I don't know how to turn on these times. There we go. Forget it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Someone just taking up the class. Uh, hold yours if you want to. Anyway, all right. Let's keep rolling. So another way to describe persistence might be, like I said already, don't be a little bitch. Might just be just being fucking stubborn. That's another way to describe persistence. Don't tell me no. Don't ever. Don't tell me no. Don't tell me you can't do it. What are you saying? No, that's not my quote. I'm not smart enough to have some like big, deep, like uh, intellectual quote like that. My quote's like "fuck it" or something like that. Anyway, be stubborn. Don't 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 let anyone tell you no. I don't care what it is. Don't tell me no. Don't tell me that I can't do something. Don't tell me I can't achieve something. Don't tell me that something isn't fucking possible because I'm not going to accept that as an answer if it's something that I believe in, something I want, something I know I need, something I deserve, something that's mine. I will I will not only show you that it's possible, I will fucking overdo it above and beyond what was already viewed as impossible and I will fucking destroy that impossibility and make it just seem like it's an average everyday thing. That's how much you need to think about someone not telling you no, someone not holding you back and just being persistent. Like when I was going into the Marines trying to better my life when I was out there causing freaking trouble, trying to better my life, get my shit together and serve my country, there were a lot of people who tried to stop me from getting in. They had to do background checks at like local, local police departments all over Rockland County and stuff and, and, and those you know, some of those police, whatever, probably they told the Marine recruiters that I would never make it, that they should never accept me, that I couldn't handle it, that I would be, they would be sending them back, sending me back to them in their jail cells, in, you know, in two weeks, that I wouldn't survive. So my answer to that, first of all, is, uh, this one is a Steve Ecker quote. My quote to them is, fuck you. Second, I obviously got into the Marine Corps, and not only did I get into the Marine Corps, I received a meritorious promotion out of boot camp as a squad leader. And as the commanding officer was presenting me with my Eagle Globe and Anchor for the first time, which means you've passed all your tests, all your qualifications, and that's signifying you're now becoming a Marine and you're no longer a recruit. I've told this story before. He handed me the emblem. He told me to go back to New York and tell all those police and all those judges and all those other motherfuckers that tried to stop you, tell them to take this 
Igor Globenanker, and just shove it up their ass. That was from a commanding officer in the United States Marine Corps. So that's just how they roll, even at the top level. That's just how it, they just teach us and ingrain it to us. So we're not going to accept no for an answer. We're not going to. We're going to be persistent. We're going to get what's ours. We're going to get what's what we need. Get to where we need to be. So when I got out of the Marines, freaking 16 years ago now. Damn, I'm I'm fucking old. Anyway, I got a job at a local gym as a personal trainer. Literally days after I got out of the Marines, I got that job as a personal trainer. Like I'm talking about, I got home, I was starting as a trainer two days after getting out of the Marines. You know when you get out of the Marines, the government, not the Marine Corps, but you had to go through this like one day class, how to, how to get separated into the, the Marine, out of, into the civilian life, whatever. They make you, you cannot get out until you sign up for unemployment. Like how fucking stupid is that? It's supposed to help you transition to going back to, you know, civilian life, but no fucking thank you. I would prefer, you know, being hungry and motivated and, and, you know, work for a living and being persistent and going to get what's mine and whatever. I couldn't understand it. The government was trying to make me basically be a, a lazy, you know, when I got home, you know, that shit wasn't for me. Sorry, I'll work hard for what's mine. I will bust my fucking ass and, you know, I don't need that free paycheck. I'm going to go earn that shit. Anyway, that's besides the point. I just thought of it and it's getting me pissed off. You guys always get me worked up. I need a drink. Anyway. So I got out of the Marine Corps, immediately got a job as a personal trainer at a local gym. At the same time, I took the police test. So go figure. Look how the shit just comes around. Took the police test thinking I'm going to be a cop. So other than them telling me I was out of shape and overweight, I've told that story before also. The doctors told me I was overweight. I was obese, they told me, which is ridiculous in pretty much the same shape I'm in now just 15 years ago, so probably in better shape. They stopped me because I was, you know, uh, overweight, obese. They told me uh, all according to all their height and weight standards, but that's besides the point. That's not what this point is here. So when they're doing their background check, again, their investigation, whatever the hell you want to call it, there were still people trying to hold me back and stop me. I went away to the Marine Corps, did my time, served honorable discharge, did four freaking years in there, then an additional year on an eight year contract. And there's still people when I got out trying to stop me. You know, I have tons of respect. For the, for the you know, police, local police officers that are out there risking their lives every day for us. But for some reason, there was someone out there that still had something against me that told the investigators, all we have to say about that guy is that we have nothing good to say about that guy. So I'm going to go back to that same Steve Ecker court I said before and fuck you. All right. So thank God I failed. Not only did I fail the, the, I was over, over the height weight standards. So I would have had to lose some weight or whatever. According to their standards, I had to, you know, my heart, apparently my heart was, I was too overweight. Like I am now basically. So not only that, that would give me trouble with that. Thank God I failed the psychological evaluation and never became a cop. Now, I don't know how I failed the psychological evaluation. It doesn't make any sense to me. If anyone could make sense to anyone else, I don't know. But thank God I failed that psychological evaluation and never became a cop. You know, I never would have been out here with you guys right now here talking to you freaks, serving my purpose impacting lives and saving lives, you know, in a different way than I might've been saving them as the, as the police do, but impacting this amount of people and helping out this, changing this amount of lives. If I had not failed that psychological evaluation. So luckily for you guys all out there that I am a crazy motherfucker. And they told me I was too crazy to be a cop. So when I do this at 415, you come for the 415 class, but now it's at 315. You come for this. You come to see the live show, don't you? No matter what time I do this, you show up. You can pull up a chair and sit over here. Got nothing to better to do. You know you've hit rock bottom when you're looking forward to this freak show. Of course. Anyway, things happen for reason, of course. <laughs> That's a head scratch or what? Why I fail a psychological evaluation? But th think about it. So if I would have been a cop, I wouldn't have been able to, you know, start this amazing creature called P Physique and 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 that all of you have become part of this crazy freaking family. So thank God I was too crazy to become a cop, but apparently I'm not too crazy for you guys. And apparently in the Marine Corps, we're shooting all kinds of freaking weapons, live ammunition, all kinds of fucking big ass guns, grenades, blowing shit up. I wasn't too crazy for them tossing out live grenades, but somehow I'm too crazy and considered too fat to be a fucking cop. But luckily, and that's why we're here today and I'm here with you guys. So they told me I was too out of shape and too crazy. So here we are. The point is, don't let anything stop you. Don't let anything hold you back. Nothing and no one should be getting in your way to following your path, creating your own fucking destiny, and then dominating your path, and then taking with yours, and, and making that shit happen. You, when you fail, learn from it. Get stronger from it. Improve. Make correction and adjustments, and continue driving forward until you get what's yours. It's called being persistent. This is exactly what we're talking about. You see a roadblock? I don't give a shit if you go over it, go around it, or run straight through that motherfucker, but you're going to go through it with persistence. Not letting anyone tell you that it can't be done. Fuck them. Maybe they can't do it, 
or maybe they don't have the confidence to do it or the persistence to do it, but you know what? Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Fuck them. I'm sure you can do it. So enough of that because you're getting me too worked up. I might start freaking smashing this computer. So we're going to move on. Persistence is the key word. Persistence will, is the umbrella that's going to make all that other, all those other words you guys are talking about make all of them happen. So we're going to go on to the details of the 24, 28 day challenge we have. For the first time ever, we're running two challenges at the same time. One for men, one for women. These are 28 day challenges. For the women is the 28 day hot mommy makeover challenge. And no, you don't have to be a freaking mom to enter the challenge. That just happens to be what it's called. The men will be entering the 28 day shred challenge. The challenge is start Monday, June 19th with unlimited weight loss, boot camp, and boxing sessions on the schedule. Brian Clear, what do you say? Finally caught a live episode instead of watching it. Yes, of course. Have any questions, put them in there. We gotta get going, we got 10 minutes till, till this class starts. So then we're gonna be doing a, a group orientation, that, in, that information will be out there. Uh, there's gonna be two winners for the challenge, one male, one female, with the best visual transformation after 28 days. The winners will receive a professional photo shoot, a massage, and then either a salon makeover or a sports supplement package. So whatever, there's a man, a, a, a male and a female winner. You choose whatever the fuck one you want. You want the, you want a makeover, do what you got to do, or or the sports supplement package. Go for it. The links to both these challenges are in the post. I post them right in the link of this video. So if you've already entered, you should already be receiving phone calls, emails, texts, let you know all the information about it, all the details. Member referral contest. This phone call is coming in, but I hope it's not interrupting you guys. Member referral details. There's a contest now for. You members, the more people you re, as whoever refers the most people into this, these 28 day challenges is going to win a prize. And this is why we started late because I had to put this shit together. I'm going to take the camera off for a second and bring you over to the prize. So this is just before the challenge even starts. This isn't for who wins the challenge, but there is a new grill. If you can even see it, I don't know if you can even see it. A new grill for whoever just gets the most referrals to sign up for this 28 day challenge. You're now live on TV, look at that, on Facebook, talking about a grill. All you gotta do is whoever signs up, if you sign two people up and no one else signs anyone up for this 28 day challenge, guess what, that grill is yours. That's what, that is the prize for just getting people to sign up and changing their lives. How many you got so far signed up? Two. Name them, bullshit. Michael and Andrea. Shit, so so far that looks like that shit is his. <laughs> Unless, cause it just started right now. So there's our current leader with two but it's for another 10, 12 days or whatever. So that grill, whoever signs up the most is gonna get that and we'll throw some other shit inside there also, stuff it with some chicken or something. Not any steak, right? We're not eating any slow cows. So that's a remember referral contest for the next uh, two weeks or until the 19th, that goes until the 19th, whoever brings in the most friends, family members, and coworkers that sign up for the challenge, the 28 day challenge, either the men's or the women's challenge, is gonna win that, a new car, Rosa, yeah, you wish. Just be happy with the damn grill. Brian Cleary, the makeover is all yours. They're going to get your hair did. What, you want to come back on? You have something to say? Some questions? You sure? Walked in at the wrong freaking time, huh? Walked in like, oh, fuck. Not only is there a camera, he's not live. He's going to put me on the fucking thing. And you have a shirt. We look like we set that shit up. So also don't forget, if you get a re if you, any time you have a referral that signs up for a full membership here with a regular, regular monthly membership, you get a big fat check, literally, and for half off your next month. So who do you know that would like amazing results just like you? Send, that, send those links to your friends, your family, your coworkers, and we will take care of them. We'll hook them up, change their lives. We've got to keep rolling. They've got to start this class in a couple seconds. They don't want me screaming this shit when they're doing a class because that's just, I don't know, scare these people away. I try to finish this before anyone comes in and you guys came in, so deal with it. This is probably the last time we see any of these people in this gym after they've finished seeing this. Luckily, I already finished the main part of this, so you guys missed that. Six-week challenge finale party. So the six-week challenge ends... Basically, the day before this four-week challenge begins, we've never done that before either, back-to-back, -back. but Saturday, June 17th, 2.15, at the gym, we're going to be blocking off the entire parking lot, an international summer party, there'll be a contest for the best home-cooked, healthy-ish ethnic food from your country, or from your fucking planet, wherever the fuck you're from, just bring something in, healthy, or on the healthy side, whatever the healthiest option is. You can bring whatever adult beverage you want, whatever they drink from wherever the hell you're from, because you know those people like to get wasted. I'm sure uh, we'll be seeing some of Joe's Trainer Joe's uh, dance moves like we saw at the last party. That was awesome. We have footage of that forever. That's some gold right there. Our case study today is Alba. We have a couple things we have to go over. The case study and then the client of the month. Or maybe clients of the month. Case study is Alba today. I'm just going to tell you basically what she told us. She's in the Game Changer program. She wanted to share her experience in the Game Changer program. She posted it the other day in the group. She started the first the six-week challenge and then she went and now she's in the Game Changer program. She's lost 
I think so far she's lost a total of 19 pounds. In the Game Changer program, she's now down five pounds because she's down to 114 freaking pounds. How many more do you think she's going to lose? She's pretty much lean and ripped and in the best shape of her life at however old she is. What, 29, 30? How old is she? I'm not sure. So one, she said one of the reasons I could join the Game Changer program was because I wanted to change my life. I felt that this program would help me. So far, I've discovered that it's more than just a weight loss program. It has changed my mindset totally. I feel more positive, less focused on what people think about me. As each day goes by, I see how positive, focus, and discipline it has made me. I'm learning how to eliminate the negativity from my life and not worrying about things or people I can't change by doing. By doing so, I have time to keep positive mindset and focus on achieving my goals and being happy. Now, damn, that's what it's all about. That's what Game Show Program is about. That's what this whole freak show when you come here to work out is all about. Alba is the case study. This is not the client of the month yet. We're getting to that. Something else I've learned through this program is that I'm becoming more confident about myself, my body, and what I want and expect from people. Another great part of the program is the support and feedback I get from the group, and we're all growing together as strong individuals. I feel to be lucky part of this group and still in the process, and every day that goes by, I'll become a better version of myself as I set a new mindset and hold myself accountable, never, never settling for anything less. I really believe in this program and it has made a difference and impacted my life in many ways. If you ask me, I would tell you that if you are ready to commit and hold yourself accountable, then this Game Changer program will definitely be for you and change your freaking life. Steve will give you all the right tools, but it's up to you to use them. Apply them and hold yourself accountable. Don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do something, not even the most important person in your life. They get in your way, they're against what you believe in, they gotta fucking go. She didn't say that part, I have to do that in for her. I'm just gonna put some of my own two cents in there. Cause she didn't, this, I can't go this many, like I can't speak this long without saying the word fuck. So I have to add a little bit in for her. Cause she didn't say it, she's speaking a little too proper for me. The only person that could hold you back from achieving our goals is yourself. We are all doing great and we continue this journey here at Peak and it will only get better with the knowledge of the trainers and mentors. All right, so the, we're gonna finish off client of the month. So the client of the month, every month, we choose a client of the month and that's too bad, unfortunately, that person is not here today. So none of you losers are the client of the month this month. So try a little harder next time you get it. So client of the month is every month, the client of the month, they get a prize package, obviously. And then the end of the year, which at our December holiday party, we announce a client of the year who wins a whole big, huge grand prize and actually wins a free year of training here, whoever becomes the client of the year. So the client of the month, actually for the first time ever, because so I had to choose two clients in a month. I don't know why I just had to do it. So the client of the month really is who is Steve Owen. Talk about a freak. Steve Owen is the most positive. He's always, he's, he's always positive. No matter what challenge or adversity is in front of him, he's always one to jump up, selflessly help each other out. He is a, a, a peak fucking freak to the bone. He's a true example of what we all, what we stand for here. And he displays all 15 of our core values every day, which we did a whole live uh, broadcast on the core values a couple weeks, few weeks ago. So Steve Owen is the client of the month. And then I had to add a second client of the month in because for some reason, this one, she could be a client of the month every month, is Maureen O'Toole. She is our second client of the month. We had two of them this month. First time we ever did that. So I guess we're going to have 13 people that are going to be up for client of the year at the end of the year. Because every month that goes by, she could, she could pretty much win the client of the month every month. So we had to throw her in there and put two of them in for this month. So Steve Owen and Maureen O'Toole are the clients of the month. Yes, Steve Owen, I told you to stay tuned and keep watching. He said, get the fuck out of here. Okay, never mind. You're not a client of the month anymore. <laughs> Just give it to Maureen. I'll give her both of your slots. All right, that's it for now. Because I got to start this class. And there's probably going to be some new people in here. We don't want to scare anyone away. So we are going to see you later. If you have any questions, you can put them down in the comments. And we'll answer them as quickly as possible.